Hello and welcome to another AIC Productions video. This is a week two quarantine special. Uh, I'm not personally under quarantine, but I have several family members who have contracted COVID virus, and so I'm having to stay away from everybody uh, at this time. But I, I recently went to my local gun store uh, to pick up some ammo. And I'm sorry, I actually wrote some notes for this video, so I have my t teleprompter here. Uh, to help me out. So, uh, I recently went to my local gun store to pick up some ammo and noticed that their normally very well stocked display was basically empty. I think they had just one gun uh, in the case and one on the wall. And I was talking to the person, uh, the salesperson about it, and he mentioned that just with between COVID and political climate that we have going on right now, that the number of first time new gun buyers has just skyrocketed and so I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to share with you uh, my experience as a first time gun owner. So for a long time this was the only gun my wife and I had in our house. This is a Walter P22 and it was almost, I don't want to say a gag gift because a gun isn't a gag gift, but it was a get gift from my father-in-law to my wife on our wedding night. We had this gun as our only gun for many years, up until a couple years ago, when I decided that I wanted to do do some more shooting. I'd done shooting as a youth in Cub Scouts and things like that, and I'd gone hunting with my uncles, but I wanted to get kind of back into it and go shooting again. And so, I am by no means an expert. I, out, I am, however, somebody who's gone through this process fairly recently, and just wanted, like I said, to, to share some of my thoughts and experiences uh, with you. One of the problems with buying a gun is just the sheer amount of available options. These are just the handguns that I personally own. And you can see the range of what's out there. And this is just what I like and what I've bought. There's literally tens of thousands of options. Uh, and so how, how do you even go about figuring out what you want to buy with with all the options that are out there. A uh, thing that I would do number one is really consider what do you plan on using the gun for? Is it going to be simply a home defense gun and so you want something that's a little bit larger caliber that has a good punch to it? Uh, is it going to be an everyday carry so you want it to be super small and super light? Uh, are you going to do, be doing some match shooting? Uh, where you just need a, a 22 that's very accurate and gives you very good feedback when you're shooting. Do you just want to do some cheap plinking and you want to be a cowboy out in the desert shooting uh, some paper or steel targets? All these guns... Oh, let's not let that one fall. Uh, that one's my wife's. She'd be upset with me. Um, all these guns do different things better than others. I have some smaller caliber guns, I have some larger caliber guns, I have my everyday carrier, I have my wife's favorite gun, uh, I have some long guns over here, we'll talk about those in a little bit. So for me personally, I couldn't buy just one gun. I have, I had to buy several. The next thing I do is set a very strict budget. All the guns I own range from between less than $200. Uh, this revolver cost me about $180 up to $500, which one of my lung guns cost me just over $500. Technically, all of those fall under the budget category. You can easily spend a thousand to three thousand dollars on a gun uh, if you if you have the the means to do that. More power to you, but you really want to set your budget. And there's definitely guns in every category for every budget. My dream gun is a custom 1911. It's a Dan Wesson. It's a $2,200 gun. I just can't justify spending that much money on any particular one gun at this time. Another thing to consider is caliber. These three uh, cartridges are all handgun cartridges. These two are technically rifle cartridges. This is a 22 long rifle, and you'll find that particular ammo in a lot of handguns, but it is traditionally a, a rifle ammo, hence the name LR, or long rifle. Uh, these, again, are handguns. This is a 45, a 380, and a 38 special. And so you want to look at what calibers are available. One of the most popular ones I actually don't have one of is a 9mm. Uh, ammo costs different prices. 9mm being that it's a more common ammo is more, less expensive than say a 45 or a 38 special. 
22 is by far the cheapest ammo that you can purchase uh, and rifle ammo tends to be a little bit more expensive. One of the things to think about with uh, the caliber is also the gun and how and, and what kind of gun it is. So this is my 380 LCP Ruger and it is a great concealed carry gun. In fact I carry this gun just about every single day and this is its cartridge right here. So this obviously is a lot smaller cartridge than the 45 that you find in my 1911. But because this gun is a polymer gun and is very lightweight and very small and because of its very small frame you can only get a couple good fingers around that. Whereas with my 1911 it's an all metal frame and I can really get a good grip with both hands. And so when I fire this gun it is far more accurate. I get less felt recoil despite the larger caliber and it's just a much more accurate shooting gun be than this because of that. And so that's something you also want to consider. Now I wouldn't daily carry this because it's a big heavy gun. I can't take it a lot of places without it being fairly obvious. Even when I use my concealed carry holster, my in waistband holster on that, uh, obviously these are two very similar style holsters. One's a lot smaller than the other and so this gun obviously has its purpose as a concealed carry. There are also two different types of frames. I already kind of mentioned it. You have your polymers, which these guns and these guns are all polymer guns. The rest of these are a metal or uh, are a metal frame. The metal frames, as a general whole, are a lot heavier than the polymer framed guns. Obviously, plastic is lighter than any kind of metal. And so, with the polymer guns, the great advantage of those is they're lighter. If you're carrying a gun like this, this is a very light gun it's very easy to carry in addition to its small size and so it makes it not, it makes it a lot more comfortable it's not as noticeable it doesn't weigh down on my pants like my 1911 does in the same position and so a, a, a polymer gun is great for especially like a daily carry uh, if you're just wanting a fun uh, plinking gun like these 22s you don't need a lot of mass to uh, absorb the recoil of a 22 long rifle uh, round because it just isn't very powerful you don't get as much kickback on it uh, and, but with something like a 1911 with its 45 caliber it makes a bigger difference the uh, 38 special if with uh, the Smith & Wesson revolver the metal frame definitely makes a difference in making the gun uh, more comfortable and the other thing with the polymer gun is you get a lot bigger variety in grip styles, uh, colors, frame sizes, things like that uh, with the polymer guns because again it's pl uh, plastic, it's injected molded and so you just get a lot bigger variety with those. The other thing to consider is uh, going with either a semi-auto or a revolver. Uh, me personally obviously I prefer the semi-autos uh, but that is just my personal preference. My wife is the big revolver person in the family. When she shoots a gun she wants to feel like a cowboy shooting that revolver. Uh, she enjoys the process of ejecting the rounds, especially with this uh, Smith & Wesson that the cylinder pops out and you pop those rounds out. She finds that to be very satisfying. Uh, I like filling up a large capacity magazine and just going to town at a steel target. Another thing to consider with a gun is what the aftermarket accessories and also what the history of the gun manufacturer is. Uh, accessories like this loader, uh, holsters, spare magazines, uh, even uh, holsters at uh, kits you can buy yourself to make. Just you want to make sure that what you buy has what you will want for the gun. Uh, some guns you buy that don't have necessarily a big company standing behind them, you run the risk of possibly not being able to buy replacement parts if parts wear out. Uh, one great thing about things like these 1911s is there's a million parts for them. Everybody, every gun company makes a 1911 style gun and so parts are, are plenty. These Ruger Mark IVs, these are both the same gun, just slightly different style, but all the internal parts are interchangeable between the two. Huge aftermarket supply for these. Um, I did buy these guns with the express pr purpose of having an available aftermarket. It was something that was important to me. So I don't buy a gun that doesn't have a larger aftermarket. The one that probably 
doesn't have as big of aftermarket as my uh, 1911 in 22 caliber. The biggest problem is these magazines. Uh, they are uh, only made by Walter and they're not inexpensive to get replacements for. But a lot of the other pit bits that are compatible with 1911s uh, are interchangeable and can be inexpensively replaced. So far I've talked about handguns. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about some long guns or rifles, shotguns. This right here is my Ruger 1022. Uh, it shoots this 22 long rifle caliber uh, cartridge, which is the same as most of these handguns shoot. The great thing about that is I only have to buy ammunition once and I can shoot it in most of my handguns and in one of my long guns um, which is really convenient especially on a if, you know if I have a day where I'm taking somebody out shooting and they want to try a different you know, a bunch of different things it's a lot easier on the wallet to shoot 22. Uh, I also really like this gun it's very accurate I have a, a inexpensive uh, red dot on here I think I paid less than forty dollars for this red dot on Amazon and it is very accurate up to I've had it up to 75 yards uh, right dead center of the target every time. So great inexpensive red dot on a great 22. Uh, these Ruger 1022s are very popular. They make a lot of different styles uh, of these guns and uh, it, make, it really is a good starting point. Uh, this gun is great for uh, beginners. Uh, I have had both my oldest son and oldest daughter shooting this gun out in the desert with me and they have really really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a great gun for a uh, a beginner or a younger shooter so uh, I highly recommend something like this a lightweight t uh, 22 caliber uh, rifle for a first gun it also would make a great uh, home defense gun as well it's shorter in size than a lot of other long guns um, it also is very accurate uh, very easy to aim very easy to control where you're aiming and so definitely a good option for a lot of different purposes in a in in a fire first firearm. All right, another great option is a shotgun. This is our 12 gauge shotgun. It is we haven't had it very long. It is a new acquisition. I actually haven't taken this out to fire yet. Uh, ammo prices started to get a little crazy here just recently, just as I got it. Uh, but it, again, uh, a shotgun is a great home defense. Uh, you can do a lot with it. You can do skeet or clay target shooting um, or trap shooting. Uh, so some different competitions. You can do uh, hunting with it. So it really is a very versatile gun, uh, especially if you're looking for a first-time firearm. Uh, I know in my state, if you're under 21, you can't buy a handgun. Uh, so you are limited to a long gun like this. And so a shotgun is a great choice. Uh, this particular one, like I said, I haven't shot it yet. I need to get it out and actually use it. Um, I'll have to wait till ammo becomes available again uh, in inexpensive qual uh, quantities. And here is my last long gun I'm going to show you. This is my Diamondback DB15. First things first, let's, uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, a lot of people see this as a an assault rifle. Assault rifle isn't a thing. That, that's not a term that actually exists. That's a term that was made up by media uh, to make people afraid. This is just a rifle. In fact, it shoots a very similar round to the other gun we were just looking at. In fact, if you look at the bullets, they're almost identical. They're both a 22 caliber bullet, the bullet itself. Obviously, the one that has a little bit bigger cartridge so it propels the bullet a little bit faster. Other than that, they're nearly identical in function. You have a trigger, it fires one bullet, one at a time with each trigger pull, and that's it. I mean, the biggest reason why this gun is so popular is because it's modular or customizable. You buy one of these, I'll even show you here real quick. This gun disassembles very easily. There we go. <laughs> Doing it backwards. So this is the main part of the gun. And once you have it apart like this, the top part, I can replace this with just about any kind of 
caliber. I can have it shoot the 45 caliber rounds. I can have it shoot 9mm rounds. Uh, I can customize it to even shoot 22s. They sell uh, kits that turn it into a gun that shoots this. And that's why people like these, is not because they're scary and bad, but because they can make it their own. It's just like the guy that customizes his car or computer. He does it because he wants to make it unique. He wants to make it his own. Um, and that's really the fun and purpose and joy of owning a, a firearm like this. Not that it's scary, it's that it's, it, it's unique. This one's mine and it's not like any others. And let me put this back together the correct way, excuse me. So I'm not doing it where I can't see. There we go. It's not because it's scary. It's not because it's uh, an evil gun or I'm, I'm going to go out and shoot a bunch of people with it. It's because it's unique. It's mine. It's, it will be exactly how I want it to be. And that, that is the beauty of, of a firearm like this, where something like these, I would have to be spending a lot of money to customize them. Uh, even just the grips on these guns cost $60, $70. Uh, whereas that $60, $70 can get me a lot of options for this gun in, in going a long way of personalizing it. And a lot of the things I mentioned about uh, the handguns applies to the long guns as well. You get another option, you get a wood stock, you get plastic, you get metal frames. Uh, one thing to, to make note of with both the handguns and the long guns is depending on the gun you buy, some of them come with cases, some of them come with soft cases. Uh, a lot of them come with just a cardboard box, and so you'll want, um, this is a case that I use, I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, it's inexpensive, uh, but well built, and it holds the guns really nice. Uh, has a place to put a lock through it to keep them secure. Uh, but, and that goes for the long gun as, as well. A lot of different options for accessories. You want to make sure that what you're getting will meet your needs. And, you know, really do some research. I'll put a link to some of my favorite gun YouTube uh, YouTubers down below. Probably by far my favorite is uh, a channel called uh, by a dude uh, named Paul Harrell. He is his humor is very dry, and if you get his jokes, he's hilarious. Uh, but one of my favorite things he does is what's called a meat target, and so he actually demonstrates uh, what ammunition does against a target that's made out of meat. Uh, and so I highly recommend looking at those. He shows you what uh, it looks like with recoil and accuracy and things like that. And the last piece of advice that I can give you, before you spend money on a gun, go out and shoot some guns. There's a lot of gun ranges that will rent you guns. Uh, that can be kind of a bit pricey. But if you know anybody who owns firearms, ask them. We're all people. This is our passion. This is something we love to do. And I don't know anybody who doesn't enjoy sharing their passion with their friends. And so if you know somebody who has guns, ask them. And they will gladly take the time to show you some good gun safety tips as well as take you shooting. And, you know, pay the favor back by offering to cover some of the ammo. But, you know, it will be a great opportunity for you to try a lot of different options as far as guns go. And really make a decision on what would work for you. Just as an anecdote, a few weekends ago, uh, I took a gentleman I met on Reddit out uh, to shoot in the desert. It was a great day. It was a lot of fun. And he ended up choosing to buy one of these. Not this one. This one's mine. He, but he's buying one very similar to it, uh, which I think is a great option. It's a great gun for uh, a first-time shooter. And there's just something about it being a, uh, a revolver, um, a single-action army. It had a lot of his history behind that. And also, he's left-handed, so a revolver works really well for a left-handed person. So anyways, hopefully you found this video helpful, uh, and hopefully it helps you make some decisions. Uh, if it does, leave a comment down below, uh, and I have some links to some support for my channel as well in the video description. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.